Matthew Ralph, and I would like to talk about bridges, how bridges began and how bridges are built. Yes, I am very interested in bridges, and I, and I would like to first start about how bridges began. Bridges began by when a log fell across the a river and, and the caveman got across safely. Early bridges were suspension bridges, made of ropes over gigantic canyon, canyons like the one in this picture. Romans were the first great bridge builders. They developed the first arch bridges, as you can see in this picture, the wedge-shaped bricks from the arch. Here's an example of a Roman arch bridge. These bridges were sometimes 25 to 30 feet. Those bridges were built so firmly that some of them are still standing today. Stone arch bridges were built in the following centuries. The medieval period saw a different kind of bridge. This time period saw the four to five bridge. As you can see in this picture, it looks like a castle built on bridges. This protected the city. As time went on, bridges were made out of wood. In the United States, some of the wooden bridges were covered bridges, like this one in the picture. As more bridges were built out of iron, the first suspension bridge was built. Let me explain how they are built. As we look at a picture of the many a straight bridge of the coast of Wales in the British Isles, it's really very simple. Cables are anchored at one end, carried over the top of the towers, strung in an arch between the towers, and anchored on the other end. The road is supported by suspenders attached to the cables. Iron bridges would soon no longer be built because it would soon be discovered that iron would not be strong enough. On December 29, 1977, a terrible disaster in Scotland took place as a train crossed the Firth of Tay Bridge. A storm hitting the high iron girders with wind and water caused the bridge to give way, killing the entire crew and passengers. More iron bridges would be built of stronger iron, but steel would be used in the future. Using steel would now mean bridges and stronger bridges. There was the Eads Bridge, the first bridge over the Mississippi River in 1874. The Eads Bridge, one of my favorite bridges I've been over, but I have, I have a, a one that I like better, the, the four... The Firth, the, the Firth of Forth Bridge. The Firth of Forth Bridge in Scotland, built in 1890, was the biggest bridge in the world. This was a cantilever bridge. This type of bridge was, ta was towered with arms that stuck out with, with a suspended span in the middle. the Firth the Fourth Bridge in Scotland. It is now the second largest bridge in the world. Can't deliver bridge in the world. This is a sketch of the Firth the Fourth Bridge. This bridge is a railroad bridge and is still used today. bridges we built in this country, the Brooklyn Bridge, in 1883. Later, the George Washington Bridge in 1931. Here is a picture of it. Many bridges built very big, but here is a drawing 
calling of a cave song. Imagine an open-ended rectangle wooden box covered in iron as much as 82 feet tall and between 20 and 30 feet square. All around the bottom edge of the box are triangle pieces of iron which will give the case on its cutting edge as it sinks into the riverbed. Water will be kept out of the chamber by compressed air. The deeper the case on goes, the more air pressure will be needed from inside the chamber. Workmen would dig deeper and deeper into the mud and rock and stone of the riverbed. Of course, there had to be a way to remove this material, so in endless chain of buckets running up and down through a water lock would do the work. Meanwhile, on the heavy timber platform overhead, masonry of the pier would be constructed. The ever-increasing weight of the masonry and the ex excavations of, of the workmen in the air chamber would cause the caissons to sink farther and farther into the riverbed until finally it rested on bedrock. Workmen reached the chamber by way of vertical tube containing a spiral staircase at the bottom of which was an airlock. Entering the lock, airlock, they closed the hatch, opened a valve, and let compressed air into the lock. When the pressure equaled that in the air chamber, they opened the door and entered the chamber. Once bedrock reached the chamber, was filled with masonry, giving the final solid support to the pier that was rising above it. The upper masonry was built in the form of a hollow square, which would later be filled with concrete, including the tube down which the men had entered the chamber. Many men died from the caissons by a disease, disease called the bends. Today, men no longer need to work inside caissons. The great Versailles Narrows Bridge in New York did not need to use men in caissons. The Versailles Bridge is the lar largest in the world. The use of cables makes these longer bridges possible. You can see the cables in this picture of the fourth road bridge in Scotland, finished in 1964. See the fourth railroad bridge in the background? As time goes on, more bridges bridges will be built. Maybe one will be longer than the Verisham's Bridge in New York. Maybe one of you will help design or work work on a build on building a bridge. I hope you enjoyed our program tonight. I hope